Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I demand a Grogar episode. <laughs> Grogar episode? Uh, you're talking about a dragon, eh? No, but Norman, how could you? Why? Why? Because Grogar is not a dragon. Oh, what he is? He's a ram. Ram? Really? I thought he was a dragon. Greek ram. Oh, t- oh the uninitiated. Oh, the uninformed. Oh, you are not fit to hear his legend. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure I'll hear it somehow. Oh, boy, howdy, will you? <laughs> and also joining us is a fire heart song. What about babies? What about babies? Well... Uh- they puke and they and they cry and they and they fill their diapers and then they and then they cry some more and then they sleep and then they get up for a nice round of diaper filling and then they cry some more. Okay, I think we get silver. <laughs> yes, and um, well, as you guys at home may have guessed, today we are going to review season seven, episode three, a flurry of emotions. So in this episode, Twilight Sparkle agrees to babysit her niece Flurry Heart. Despite already having a very busy schedule. Oh dear me. But anywho, um, let's go into first impressions. And Silver, what do you think, man? Well, I enjoyed this episode for a variety of reasons. One, it got to feature Twilight doing something. And over the last couple of seasons, that's been a rare event. It's nice to see her being proactive or pursuing a goal. It also gave the royal family a little bit more personality. Flurry was more aware of her surroundings. Kings in shining armor were actually doing something. It actually cut back to them to let us see them doing that something and their reactions therein. So all in all, it was a fun episode. It's not like the greatest ever, but it was one I very much enjoyed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Seppi? I don't know. Flurry during this episode kind of put me... I don't, I don't know how to describe it. Like... There were moments where she was super, super childish and other moments where she felt more aware than she needed to be or more aware than normal. I don't know. It would shift in between this um, personality to where she was aware or where she was oblivious like a normal baby. Well, except normal babies don't aren't always aware. So I don't know how I feel about Flurry, although my favorite scenes lie within Shining Armor and Cadence, ironically enough, when they're at the art gallery with their new buddy Spearhead. And oh god, Spearhead, I love him. He's so adorable and just like that college roommate that you used to work with, and I love him. (laughs) Oh my. And as for me, I can really relate to this episode. Just for the fact that I have two nephews at the age of three and two, almost four and three, respectively. And boy, do they have lungs. Here's the thing. I relate so much to this episode because I know how it feels to be there when they do cute stuff. And I also know how it feels when I hear them cry or just not behave. It's frustrating yet rewarding at the same time. But this episode shows that you want to be the best aunt slash uncle, but you're not giving in time because of your busy schedule. So it's a matter of balancing things in and out. That's what I saw. And I totally relate with this episode. And before it even starts, I already know where this is going. It's one of those scenarios where it's been done before, but how do they do it here? Anyway, I'm just going to stop rambling and let's head on to the review. Um, instead of going to scenes by scenes like how we usually do, we're going to jump into going themes because the scenes by scenes are a bit repetitive. Twilight starts something, Flurry Heart wrecks it, and then Twilight apologize, rinse, repeat. And we're glancing over the huge fact of the real issue here, which is Twilight needs to delegate. But anywho, so we're going to go by themes. And let's start off with Princess Twilight Sparkle. So she starts out the episode by talking to Nurse Redheart here, which has a cutie mark redesign, and saying that, oh, the kids have the, what you might call this, chicken pox, but they call it the pony flu or pony pox or something like that. I don't remember. Something, I don't know. Uh, pony pox, yeah. 
Yeah, pony pox. And we learn a great revelation. Shira Lee teaches more than one class. Really, though? Well, that's the class photo there, and ain't none of those kids with uh, Apple Bloom, Scootaloo, or Sweetie Belle. Oh, yep. okay. Well, I'm, I mean the assumption where uh, Shirley is the only teacher in Ponyville, and she teaches multiple um, grades. <laughs> oh, How does she manage? <laughs> oh, man. The... This is going to be a long episode, isn't it? <laughs> of no, the MBA. No, no, no. We, we we're going to cut through it. But still, uh, fact of the matter is, the setup is here. Twilight needs to be there for the kids and cheer them up. Unfortunately for her, Relative comes in and, well, here's the plot. Shining Armor and Cadence comes in to give Twilight responsibility that Twilight can't handle because she has other things in store for her. Which, honestly, I found, I found that to be somewhat karmic after she got all high and mighty with Pinkie Pie and Baby Cakes. Some ponies just aren't up to the challenge. <laughs> oh, and you automatically are? Well, <laughs> aren't you Miss Humble? Oh, I, I just like to see her eat crow, which she does at the end. But not literally, they're herbivores. Yeah, <laughs> true, true. Mm. But anywho, um, Silver, I want you to take the flow with Twilight. Well, it's Twilight. She's not gone to do a lot in recent seasons. She got, basically, ever since she got the castle, her primary role seems to be to sit in the castle and be really frustrated. Mm-hmm. Or worse yet, be bored. Which is just... <laughs> I'm bored. Exactly. And for me, that's disappointing. I mean, she's always been the most proactive, the most eager to explore and experience. So in many ways, I've come to view that castle as a prison for her. Uh, but here she is, and right off the bat, we start with a character who wants to help young foals, who wants to be involved and uh, get going. We have a character and an aunt who wants to, you know, entertain and know that she's both giving love and perhaps receiving it. It's funny, uh, talking with Eliora about Brotherhood Social, some people have criticized Big Macintosh was wanting to be Appleton's hero. But there, there is something to be said for knowing that you're being a big influence in a young life. And through it all, throughout the episode, Twilight really is trying to be a, a champion to the other ponies, you know, a princess who looks after and encourages others, but also who uh, trying to be a hero in a personal life. And so it's nice to see her trying to be all those things and still being fallible. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And here's where I appreciate the writer's decision to make Twilight the lovable aunt, because I'm sure we all here have a family member who has a nephew or a baby or something like that, right? Or am I the only one here? Right now, it's mostly to you, Norman. Oh, God. Well, my brother has, like, four dogs. Does that count? Well, let's go with that. But anyway. Um... <laughs> Although I don't get to babysit them all that much. They, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, we we all here want to be the main hero for our relatives, younger sibling or whatever it is. Make sure that they look up to us. Make sure that we can guide them in life and so on. But that's a tough balance to do because we as we know who we are, have our own faults. But us teaching them how to do things, ooh, ain't the easiest thing to do. It's a balancing act of not showing your true nature, yet showing them what they want to see. Not fun. And in Twilight's case here, she's pretty gung-ho about the whole fact that she wants to be there for Flurry Heart, but at the same time, trying to be there for the sick kids. And then when she has to be the, the firm aunt, where she has to just insist that, uh, put us down when Fleur Hart is flinging the whole blessed hospital around. Mm-hmm. In many ways, I feel like this is what someone needs to do with Flurry Hart. She is so exceptionally powerful. And she's if she, misbehaving. And if you don't set the rules, rather, uh, she's gonna grow up like Discord. Never, all power, all that power, but no sense of limitations or, or, other centeredness, mm-hmm. but people raise the point that to be a good parent means not screaming and scaring your children into behaving. 
yeah, it's got to, you got to hit that middle road. Yeah, that's the thing where I think times change how kids are brought up. Because I remember back in my day, my parents, they raised their voice and took the newspaper and rolled it to give a a good spanking. I, I remember that. Like, that turned me into what I am today. Any of you? Safi, do you want to touch this one or should I? Um, um... What am I supposed to touch? Like how my parents punished me as a kid or? I was going to make a crack at how Norman turned out. Though truthfully, Norman, you're a wonderful person. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Go ahead, Silver. It's all yours. <laughs> you jerks. Uh, look at who I'm fr- Look at, and look who my friends are right now. And that's the way, uh huh, uh huh. He likes it, uh huh, <clears throat> uh huh. For shizzle, must grizzles. God damn it. <laughs> Your fault. Even outside of this friendly workplace, you still do that. <laughs> oh yes, I do that all the time. I drive everybody nuts, which is probably a sign of my own upbringing. <laughs> oh no! Did your parents call you with uh, what do you call this? Ebonics? Oh no! And I think my parents did rely on spanking oh. when I was, but I was very young. Yeah, same with mine. Apparently, my parents also had to deal with a wooden <laughs> spoon as a kid. <laughs> If funny enough, I'm thinking of The Simpsons. I mean, here we are. All of us talk about our parents using more physical punishments, mm-hmm. and now it, punishment. and now and now everyone's like, "Oh no, you mustn't harm the children. You mustn't touch the children." Or, Save and all, the children. <laughs> and all and all I could do is think of that one Simpsons episode where Ned Flanders <laughs> has to deal with anger, his beatnik parents. We've oh, tried yeah. nothing, and we're all out of ideas. <laughs> He's trying that thing on God. We don't resort to discipline, man. I was just watching that the other day, actually, on FX. <laughs> X. But the thing is, uh, let's let, let's not go... Well, parenting is one thing, but I'm going to take it a step further by saying during my school days, when I was in the first to second grade, I think, like really young, when I don't do my homework, I'll I get punished in school. I, I think I get canings or whatever it is. And yeah, that taught me to do my work. But in all essence, I'm just rebellious. But still, um, that was how school life was way back when. Yeah, I, I sort of remember that. In high school, though, I never really got homework. <laughs> oh, lucky you. Never you got homework in school? What? what? In, high school, in high school, I didn't really get all that much homework. And just like that, I resent you. Yeah, a lot of dog. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, does it help that I got homework all the time in college? Oh, la dog. No, because I had homework in college. I had lots and lots of homework in middle school and elementary. Oh, well, fiddle dee dee, <laughs> so did I. <laughs> but any... No! <laughs> <laughs> any who continue right back to Twilight. Twilight here is trying to be the authority figure for Slurry Heart being the role model and so on. How do you think? Does it work? Not really, because you're more trying to please the kid than provide an example. Yeah, like, when she went on, like, after she quote-unquote yelled at Slurry Heart, oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have yelled. I I will be a better aunt. I'm so sorry. I should have paid attention to you. Well, I can understand wanting to please the kid and, you know, not make her cry and it's heartbreaking. Trust me, I have a dog. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no, really. My yeah, new I, dog, I know, I know. Like, I'll, I'll tell that story later. At the same time, I feel like Twilight should have went through with punishment, especially since the kid's lives were in uh, danger. He, a bit. Here's why I don't agree with you. Here's why I don't agree with you. For, for the only fact that uh, Flurry Heart may be Twilight's niece, but she's not um, the parent. Like, any corporal okay. punishment or whatever it is, it should be done by the parents. Well, yeah, but at the same time, during the time, it wasn't handled well. You shouldn't be trying to please the kid, even though, you know, your life was just in danger a couple of seconds ago. She needs someone to tell her, oh, hey, cut that out. And yeah, don't be mean to the kid, but at the same time, there needs to be a balance to where, like, you know, the child shouldn't be in the right, but you're not in the wrong either. 
Yeah, I understand that. But the way the story was told or the way that the story is set up is that Twilight here is at fault for almost everything because if Twilight were to pay full attention to Flurry Heart here, none of that would ever happen. Well, at the same time, Twilight had responsibilities. If anything, Twilight was in the wrong from the beginning when she was taking care of Flurry Heart and not telling Shining Arbor and Cadence that, hey, I have stuff to do. She got distracted by the cutesy wootsiness of Flurry Heart, and that's kind of where the fault lied. Then again, maybe it's Shining Armor and Cadence's fault for dumping her into the Twilight in the first place without any... Yeah, understandable. But here's the thing where we can shift topics from Twilight to any of the other characters. Like, since you brought up Shining Armor and Cadence... Let's go with them. Personally, I wanted to go with Spike, but Shining Armor and Cadence are, well, kind of at fault here. So, Shining Armor and Cadence, out of the blue, nowhere, no warning or anything like that, came in and barged into Twilight's life, saying, Twilight, you, baby, now, we go. Their photo finish? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we go. Well, well, um... I'm just going to assume that they assume that Twilight was having. <laughs> I'm well, bored. Is... <laughs> kind of days. This is Kings of Shining Armor. Anytime they, they so much as chip a hoof, they call on Twilight for help. <laughs> I mean, I, I, this is a little cynical, but sadly, that's the role they've been given in this show. Oh, well, I, I won't say that. But Twilight, his... you are bidding because we're terrible at it. I, I will say it because I just did. <laughs> but here's the thing. Um, Cadence and Shining here, um, they've been through a lot. And I I remember you saying way back in the beginning of Season 6, Silver, where Cadence does nothing. She doesn't do a whole lot for her character. It, but Shining here shows more development. But what do you think about this one? Does... Cadence improves a bit? Oh, sorry, um, has Cadence improved a bit since we, we last left her? Well, yes. The short answer is yes. By slightly. Not by well, much. Not by a whole lot, but look, one, there's that scene where they're, they and uh, Spearhead are admiring the black. The blackest black. And this is something Cadence doesn't get at all. It's art. Well, she never is had to. art? Or a mistake. <laughs> uh, even a trash bin can be art if you do it right. Yeah. Having stood long, long watches, both Shining Armor and Lance, or is it Spearhead. 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 For some reason I want to call him Lance because it's the surfer, <laughs> surfer, uh, voice. So here's Cadence doing something that she doesn't actually enjoy. For the first time, this is not Cadence getting to be a pretty, pretty princess. Uh, it's just her being a pony who's doing this more for her husband than for any other reason. And so it, it is kind of endearing because we get to see how Cadence behaves when she's uncomfortable. It's similar when she uh, is sleep deprived and repeating herself. <laughs> Back when Flurry Hart was born, they were they were fine drawing Cadence looking tired, but she never really showed it with the same physicality as uh, or nervousness as Shining Armor. Here, she's just a little more scatterbrained, <laughs> and so in doing so, it makes her more of a character because you get to empathize with her rather than being asked to stand in awe of her. Yeah, true that, true that, and trust me, um, parents with young babies they grow up and ooh, they don't have good sleep. <laughs> I do see your point here, Silver. With Cadence here, she's, well, like you mentioned, scattered brain, not thinking right, sleep deprived probably, and wanting to have some alone time with Shining. Probably visiting the art gallery is not one of the best scenarios. But here's a question for you guys. What happened to Sunburst? He stayed in the Crystal Empire doing way too much magic. Silver? He was hiding under a table after Fleur his last round of caring for Flurry Heart nearly cost him his precious beard and half his books. <laughs> well, he was nearly abducted by he was nearly ab abducted by an inner demon of the third circle of the fifth dimension, and oh. even still he wakes up screaming each night. Oh my! Would it be far fetched for me to say that he's in Cantalot 
looking through stuff with books and probably tie into Legend of Magic. It's an idea, but, well, I guess it's at least the first five issues. Though I still remember when Caden said, oh, I hope he takes his role as a, the crystalline guy seriously. It's like, hey, Caden, it's your mother. I hope you take your role seriously. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, I got to say, in the crystalline, they weren't exactly the, the best parents of all time. Well, being a parent for the first time is never easy. It takes a lot of trial and error. I don't disagree with that, but at the same time, they're like, oh, I hope he takes his two. You worry about your own role first. <laughs> worry uh, about it first. It's oh yourself. You're true, true. Go Prince, check yourself, girl. Princess, improve thyself. Uh, besides that, are we missing anything else? Besides they look tired, they're more relatable now, and we hope to see them more and improve? What is art? Baby, what is hurt. love? Tick, tick, da, tick, da, 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 uh, <laughs> I'm tiring my ne- neck out. Yes. So, anywho, um, let's jump to another character and Spike. Spike here is the, what you call this? He is the most sensible one here. He is the anchor for Twilight. Um, well, anchor for Twilight. He's the most responsible one out of everyone here. Yep, he is the voice of reason in all this. The lone voice of sanity crying out from the wilderness. Yep. And why is Spike getting shafted in every episode? Poor him. He's the most sensible one compared to Applejack. Well, (laughs) after seeing uh, Honest Apple, he might be the more sensible one. Soon. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll, we'll address that one soon. (laughs) Meh. Uh, but still, uh, Spike here tells Twilight that, no, we have things to do. You promise people that you have to do stuff. Uh, Twilight, t- t- oh gosh, this princess, uh, we do stuff, we do stuff. But he tries and support Twilight in any way he can and succeeds in some places and, well, hardly fail at others. But I wouldn't say it's all his fault. But he gets to have the shining moment at the end. He is celebrated a, a champion to the foals and getting to read his favorite story. He's rewarded in the end for his clarity. And perhaps the greatest compliment, for the first time, Cadence and Shining are actually the f- first ponies to ask, where is Spike? Yay! Do you know how many times we've asked that question? <laughs> uh, there's even fanfic written about it. That's sad. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh but there's another sad thing we're gonna talk about later on. <laughs> uh but still Spike here seems to be well balanced, well mannered and the sensible one here. I-, I-, I can't say anything else than he sees a problem and knows how to fix it, but Twilight here just ignores his every whim. Yeah, she's trying to be the best aunt, she stops being the best surrogate sister. True that. Mm-hmm. And at the same time here, the whole town of Ponyville seems to... Well, I, I think we are getting more world building for Ponyville. We see that they have a toy store, so that's cool. Have you seen a toy store nowadays besides Toys R Us? One or two, but nothing to write home about. Yeah, that's rare. It's rare, but at least we know the children of Ponyville could be commercialized. <laughs> yes, uh, My Little Donkeys. There's a brand. My little donkey. So oh God, that sounds terrifying. <laughs> ah. Although, ah. who who would want a Paris Bright toy? Is my question. Well, who wants I'm to have a wolf plush? Who a would want a, a wolf plush? That's, that sounds awesome. It's a wolf. Yeah, it's sleek. It's powerful. It might act as a psychiatrist. I don't know. Well, here's the but... thing. <laughs> here's the thing. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> Took me a bit, but yeah, I, I see what you did there. Did. Uh, but what's the Paris Bright going to do? It's going to purr, it's going to nuzzle, it's going to multiply and eat all your stuff and become a plague upon the land? But it's just the same thing, well, it's Silver. it's plushie, it can't read, can it? Yeah, true that. You never know. It sounds like a Tamagotchi the way you're describing it. <laughs> and here's the thing, Silver. Um, we humans have strange toys too, like plastic spiders, plastic cockroaches, and even plastic snakes. Well, snakes are adorable. I, I know some people who would argue with you on that, Orman. What? Pet snakes are 
a legitimate pet. They sell. They the are. Pet. They are. Yeah. Doesn't mean they're cute all the time to everyone. Well, depends. I'm <laughs> sorry. Well, you're, you're you're causing me to have another family flashback. <laughs> oh God, uh, what happened? Our school had a snake uh, in the in the mm. library, mm. A, a pet snake, you know, in a case. Mm-hmm. And kids could take it home to care for the weekend. Oh, wow. That's nice. And when the option came up for me and my brother, my dad took us down to the uh, the street curb. And we all sat down. My mom was back in the house. And my dad said, guys, if we bring this snake into the house, mom will leave. <laughs> There's no doubt about this. <laughs> she will not be in the same house as that snake. <laughs> Ergo, we never brought the snake home, and I don't consider that a terrible loss. I like my mom more than a snake. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> uh, but you never experienced the look or the petting of the snakes. But still, but still. Uh, where, where was my point again? Uh, yes, we humans have strange toys, yes. Uh, but... Continuing on back to the story, what else can we say? Uh, everyone here is at fault except for Spike. Spike is the responsible one here. He tries to reign in Twilight, but without success. And in the end, Twilight here learned a valuable lesson from Flurry and said, listen, is, um, it turns out being the best aunt ever isn't about spending the most time with your niece, but spending quality time with her. So that says a lot. Yes, indeed. Yep. Am I missing anything else here? John Cena? <laughs> Why? How? A cold one with the boys? A culture of boys? What? A I don't know, John. A cold one with the boys. Uh, well, I don't think Spike... I don't think there's anything cold in here. Maybe the milk. <laughs> Ah, silver never change, even though you miss all the meme references. Oh, don't you be talking about missing uh, meme references, young lady. we got all these movies you need to catch up on. Indeed. I yeah. just saw Heathers. Does that count? Heathers? You've never heard of Heathers? It's back in the 1980s, man. This doesn't sound like something I would have watched in the 80s. <clears throat> oh, I'll tell you about it later. It's a high school drama. <laughs> Yeah, I was watching lots of murder. I was watching Transformers and crying at Optimus Prime's death. Thank you very much. Oh, I need to show you Heather's. Oh boy, I will introduce you to Heather's. Uh, But anywho, I I think that's about it for now. I mean, unless we're missing anything, missing huge points that we're not stating out. Spike likes one-liners. Spike likes. Stories where the hero gives out quippy one-liners, a la Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm-hmm. And a callback reference to Pinky's party cave. That's cool. Uh, he, yes, where she keeps a record of everyone's personality traits and views. It's like, Pinky Pie is watching you. We will, we will serve the Pinkie Pie Empire. <laughs> Big All sister se- Pinkie Pie is watching you. All your secrets will be laid bare. Watching. We will all smile, smile, smile. <laughs> oh, God, you. Ah, uh, but, but anywho, but anywho. Um. <laughs> I'm watching you, Wazowski. Always watching. Oh, God. Always. So I'm guessing that's about it. Um, let me double check before I move on because hey, I, I know that the chat is going to have a field day with us here because, uh, they they seem to always do. They seem to always do. Well, that we it's entertainment. Indeed. Uh, but still, um, <clears throat> as far as I can tell, we covered all of the characters, all of their, well, faults at this one, because, well, a lot of characters are at fault. Oh, you know what? We haven't talked about Flurry. You, you want to go touch on her? I mean, you want to talk about her or... Should we? She's the demon spawn, the end. Not really. Uh, Norman, I appreciate that hasty backpedal as you, you almost got an archer phrasing boom. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yes. Uh, <laughs> but, but, anywho. <clears throat> yeah, let's talk about Sappy. <laughs> uh, no. uh, let's talk about Flurry Heart here for a bit. 
<laughs> oh, we can talk about me. That'd be great. <laughs> She's a demon. Moving on. I find her adorable. That's just what she wants you to think. Then when you're least expecting it, boom, you're dead. Oh, yeah. You, you've been listening to DWK, haven't you? All right. So <laughs> there's this Sapphire Heart song. <laughs> and she's just sitting there being like, oh, I'm so young and I never had to do homework in high school. <laughs> hey, I said I didn't get much homework. That's not the same as never doing homework. And I'm like, are you serious? I know the butt homework. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sad and lonely. <laughs> oh, you. Ah, but anywho. Uh, well, if you're not interested in talking about Flurry, I think we can end this and move on to the other thing. Well, actually, I am interested uh, right. in talking about Flurry, but I need a drink of water after. I don't know how he does that. <laughs> uh, That's his natural voice, man. Uh, yeah, well, his natural drunk voice, from what I understand. Oh, boy. <laughs> Uh, I'll start off because yeah. looking at how Flurry here is, we all know that she's powerful and uh, quick on the uptake and uh, smart. And from what I can tell here with the episodes that have been shown, she tries to delegate with the twins while they were fighting with one another about a blimp. Hasbro has to have that blimp toy there. Eh? It's kind of scary that she's more... uh She's more oh, mature than the older cake twins. And I have to note something. The cake twins are not wearing diapers anymore. Yay! Yes, they've graduated. That way Flurry can look younger in her blue diaper. Yay! Which I'm sure is spun from the finest silk. <laughs> yep. But it still shows that uh, Flurry here is maturing or has an understanding of uh, things like what you call this? What was the word I'm looking for? A delegation. Yes. First thing she does is ask Anti Twilight to Anti Twilight help. Uh, the twins are fighting. Maybe they want this toy, but nope. Anti Twilight is busy with Pinky. So she does the next best thing, which is I should split this toy into two so you both can play it. Yay! That didn't work the way they wanted. Yep. 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 Or the way she wanted, which is both sad and boy. Yeah. I feel for Flurry here. She just wants to have attention and be, well, I won't, I won't say pampered, but she just wants attention because she's a little filly that needs attention. And her temper tantrum there was really, really, aww. Poor thing. Yep. Compare this to the crystalline where she was completely oblivious to everything she was causing. I mean, she was, she was basically killing a nation. And giggling. And you're like, oh, but babies are like that. It's like, yeah, I don't remember babies giggling when, as the freezing cold encroaches or people are in danger of dying. That's just me. Maybe Trump's childhood. I don't <laughs> <No>. know. <laughs> yes. Or Cartman. Probably. Oh, you guys. <laughs> uh, but still, um, it shows here that Freddy tries to delegate, probably by watching um, Sunburst. And also, she's good at that shield spell. I think she picked that up from her dad. Maybe. Well, you need a little private time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I know. Oh, my God. Oh, not like that. Oh, you people. No, you people. Your minds are in the guts. Oh, Just like, I need some privacy. Respect my privacy. <laughs> Respect my thought. <laughs> uh, and also, Flurry here does forgive. Pretty fast, though. Well, she's she's full of the love. I mean, that's Thorax. Thorax was all like, oh, she's so surrounded by love. But I just like that she's more aware. Now, one can make the argument she's a little too aware. That suddenly now she is basically the awareness of adult, but she just can't speak like an adult yet. Mm-hmm. But still, but still, it's good to see that we have a bit of development for Flurry here. Uh, I, I, I do hope she grows up and we get to see her at least have a few words even though they baby talk, I hope. Ask Tara. She knows how to do it. What if her first words aren't, Die, mortal. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, but anywho, uh, I, I think that's the character analyst for this session. And let's remember see anything. If you guys have anything you want to point out, do do it in the, um, what you want to call this, comment section. I'll read it through and interact with you guys. But anywho, uh, let's go on to final thoughts. So, Silver. This was a fun episode. 
this is one thing I didn't say about Twilight. Since becoming a princess, her circle, and maybe even before she became a princess, her circle was mostly limited to the main six and the royal family. Trixie was something of an intrusion. I was so happy when she had Moon Dancer and the others expand that circle. But right now, and looking at summaries for future episodes, it seems like she's sort of locked in where she's only interacting with nobility. And I think that's a mistake. I think Twilight needs to learn and interact with others. Otherwise, she's never going to be a full character or redefine the princess uh, archetype as so many people are promised she shall. Understandable. I can see that. But this was fun. That's why I like that she was trying so hard to take care of sick foals. That is something that would make her more relatable, approachable, and celebratory. Mm-hmm. And it does fit the job scope of a princess. You do always say that Twilight does nothing. And in this episode, she is doing something. Unfortunately for her, Cadence and Shining just barge in with Flurry. Although I kind of love how the, the, the tension, well, Cadence and Shining. It's like, Norman's going to kill the royal family. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I... <clears throat> Norman wants to read your side. Norman wants to read your side. Anyway, Seppi. My overall thoughts, I enjoyed the, even though we didn't get to talk about much of it, I enjoyed Cadence and Shining Armor's little side story, more story overall. I think Spearhead was just the highlight of the episode for me, even though we really didn't get to talk much about him. He's that bro that you just want to crack a cold one with the boys with. <laughs> All right, you did. But I, I don't know, I mean, Spearhead here, when I look at him, things are going in my head where, okay, he's a Pegasi, do mean, does this mean that the only magic that's happening to him during his time serving the Royal Guard is his coat turning white and change cutie marks to be the standard guard cutie mark? Or... Well, the guards don't have a standard cutie mark, that's the really? scary thing. I've never seen a guard's cutie mark. But then again, I'm not really trying to check them out in that way. Hmm. You've seen shining armor, but but that's with his armor off. How many guards have you seen with their armor off? Hmm, True. Oh, well, probably. But I do like to think that each guard who wears or who dons the armor has an enchantment spell placed upon them to look all the same. That's a uniform thing. Hmm. Oh, Oh, I see how it is. So all we guard ponies look alike to you. Have you not seen how they look? I've seen several episodes where they where they brought in more colors. Yeah. Now there's greens and browns, and they they were all terrible guards. Make no mistake, because they abandoned their post. Well, cake. They don't say anything because they're scared of Celestia. <laughs> uh, but those were dark brown. Actually, maybe uh, there's a thought. Maybe maybe surfer accents are also a byproduct of all the memory wipes. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure Celestia has had to, you know, say, guards, you saw me freaking out, and I thank you for standing politely at attention, but uh, I've got a reputation to uphold. Zap. Look at this straight dot here. <laughs> uh, but still. <clears throat> here comes the music black. Oh, boy. But anywho, as for me, I like this episode. It's one of those episodes where it's relatable to me because of my experience in life. And I do wish people who watch this episode take the lesson of delegation. Because here's the thing, where is Starlight? She lives in the castle, but she's nowhere to be seen. Like, Well, she she heard someone need to care for a baby. She's like, no, gone. <laughs> <laughs> in that case, I don't blame her. Yep. <laughs> well, she could just help. Uh, spike with the shopping but oh you know what whatever whatever but still uh, delegation if you're in that position where you have enough power to do stuff delegate your responsibility if you're too busy because being all caught up and trying to do so many things and trying to please so many people you end up pleasing no one well those are my thoughts but anywho silver next week what are we going to do Next week, we're going to do something special. We're show- going to cry our eyes out. <laughs> yes, it's both a beautiful and sad moment. 
as we discuss the end of Samurai Jack. Jack to the past, Samurai Jack. Watch out. He got back to the past and it was terrible. <laughs> uh, and also that's a Patreon sponsored video. Uh, yes. Anyway, we'll talk more about that one next. <laughs> we'll talk about that one next week. As for now, if you guys would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show where we have two rewards. One is the awesome reward where for a dollar you'll get access to deleted episodes or the access to the review and discussion podcast and a shout out at the end of the show saying thank you. And the amazing tier where for five dollars you get the same but we love you even more. Yay. <laughs> and I'd like to thank Lurka Cat, Twilight Genesis, Number Dracotoria, Starstream and also Master of Black. Thank you guys for all the support. You guys are really amazing. And let's sign out. I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. I am Sapphire Heart Song. And we'll guys see you next week with <laughs> I'm going to check. <laughs> See ya. Adios. Let me take care of this big baby. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, look at the little Norman baby. Hey, don't have that. The little baby wants to cry his bad tears. <laughs> yes. <laughs>